Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at this little constant current adjustable load. And this was provided free of charge by our friends at Banggood. And this is a neat one because it comes with this little daughter board that plugs in here that allows you to test your quick charge 2 and quick charge 3 type devices. So this thing is called the 35 watt constant current double adjustable electronic load. And by double adjustable they just mean you have a, a f coarse and a fine control. Now it comes with a built in OLED screen which we're going to take a look at here in a moment. And some MOSFET that they have completely obliterated so we have no idea what it is to do the actual work. And if we look over here you can see there is a micro USB lightning, I guess another micro USB, USB-C and a mini USB and you can also power it uh, indirectly through here and uh, it is good up to 25 volts so let's take a quick look at it on Banggood's webpage so here's a product on Banggood's webpage and as you can see like I said it's the 35 watt constant current double adjustable electronic load with quick charge 2 quick charge 3 trigger quick voltage USB tester voltmeter aging <laughs> discharge and it is uh, $23.82 in US dollars I used to be able to click on here and switch to different currencies but should not let me do that no more and if we come down here you can see a little bit of the uh, description I'm not going to read over a whole bunch of this you can just pause it and read it at your leisure here's telling us what we have uh, iPhone that would be the lightning connector micro USB USB C mini USB independent power supply oh because this is a different way to power it then we have our input here LED parallel current so you can measure uh, like charging your phone we'll give that a try real-time monitor that would be the screen and a button so yeah neat so let's start out by having a look at it with my Vinsic power bank and the reason I'm using this power bank is because it is quick charge capable I don't know if you can really see that so we shall plug her in here into the orange quick charge port and you can see it's outputting 5.09 volts at 0.1 amp so we'll turn this here a little bit and increase the load go to like a half amp here now I'm going to adjust it with the fine control there we go right at about an amp alright so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this button here nothing happened try again there we go so you can see now we're up oh, come on there focus at 9 volts click it again and now we're up to 11.8 or 12 volts and if we click it again we should go back to 5 volts no okay I have to click the down button huh once, twice, three times. And we're back to five volts at a half an amp. So let's increase this a little bit. We'll take it up to an amp. Pretty good. Try an amp and a half. This is testing my power bank as much as anything else. Crank up there to two amps, which is a nominal charging voltage for most of your current smartphones. There we are, two amps. And let's see what she says here. We're at 97%. Pretty good. Don't really feel any, any heat coming off there yet. So that's working pretty nice. And you can use it without this device in there and you can see it still works just as well 
Now we can press the old button button, who's got the button here, and it takes you to this neat little screen. Let's uh, see if we can't zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. So what you can see over here are the voltages on our USB pins. Then over here you see the resistance, temperature, how long it's been running, and the current. Press the button again. This is the main screen. Voltage, current, capacity, energy. That's interesting. 9.970 watt hours and the time it's been running. You can go back to here. And I think if we press and hold this, I thought it would. Yeah, it resets the time and it resets the capacity. So now it's recalculating our time and capacity. So that's, you know, an interesting device. Let's see how it works for uh, measuring cell phone charge. So we have my phone here, the Galaxy S7, a charging cable, which we'll plug into there. I we'll should plug that into my phone and plug this into here. My phone gagonked, which means it's charging. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a little charging symbol there. And then if we look here, it's charging at 0.92 or so amps. So what that's telling us is that this old takeoff guy here is in parallel. So let's see what my phone has to say here. There's the voltages on our pins. I'm not a USB guy, so I don't know what those center pins mean, but they're telling it something. Yeah. Neat little device, huh? She's good up to 25 volts. So what we'll do here is we'll hook it up to my desk bench power supply, which I've got set for about 23 volts because no reason to push it too far, right? So it's showing us 22.7 volts. Now here's the interesting thing. Let's crank up the load a little bit here. Zoom in. Let's take it up to, whoa, over 35 watts. Should know like that. Take it up to one amp. As close as we can get it. Okay. So there it is, 1 amp. And you're seeing we're getting 21.3 volts. So is there really a 2 volt drop? Let's sit it down here. I'm going to zoom out. Now there you can see the power supply showing us 23 volts at 1.05 amp. So let's bring in a meter. Bring in the old flukity fluke fluke fluke. And I'm going to test the voltage at the output of the power supply. Let me make sure I got a good contact on it here. Hold on. So 22.9. Pretty close, right? Now let's check the voltage at the input here. Twenty-two, twenty-one 21.4 so we're looking at almost a volt and a half drop that's interesting that I switched that off at the exact same time the fan decided to switch off things like that make engineers have to change their underwear so you see we're still showing 21.2 volts there and 
23.1 volts there. This is about a one meter cable, about 18 gauge wire. So you can actually calculate the voltage drop on that if you wanted to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll the voltage down to let's say 10 volts. That's 10 volt output. And we're showing 8.55 volts input at 8. Point, what? 5, 8 or so amps. All right, let's crank up the load again. Take her up to maybe 2 amps. And you can see now we're at 15.2 watts. Yep, 3 amp. Now we're at 17 watts. Go up to the max here. 4.42 amp. 4.59 amp. But look at our input voltage. 3.54 volts. Ah, hold on. Oop. 10.1 volts output there. Yet all we're seeing here. Focus. 3.46. So yeah, there's a considerable voltage drop. But what that's telling you is that that current is heating this stuff up. And these wires are quite toasty. Let's uh, have a demonstration of wire toastiness. Got her with 12.8 volts output. We're seeing 4.8 volts there. About 4.5 amps, so 21 watts. That's putting out some heat. We've got the meter here. I'll bring in, you can see it. Let's see if we can get a nice heat reading off these wires. Up she climbs, 35 degrees C, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. See, I'm just using a probe right there on the wires. We're up to 102, 104. That's pretty toasty. You know, if you don't have wires that are rated that high, you could easily burn them out. But this little guy seems to be handling pretty good, so yeah, not too bad at all. Man, these are these are nice and warm. Look how look how floppy they are. That's because they're so hot. So anyway, that's the 35 volt or 35 watt constant current a double adjustable load from Banggood. You guys like this? I hope you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.